when you're developing your projects, you know, it, it takes takes cash, experience, uh, you know, and then trust with, with your network of people that you, that you can get it done. This is episode 58. This is The Business of Architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is your host, Enoch Sears, and this is the show where we talk about running a great business so that you can enjoy the fruits of your labors as an architect, enjoy design, and not have to worry about paying the bills. Today's show is brought to you by the Business of Architecture Conference, which will be coming to you online only in early October, where you're going to be able to learn everything you ever wanted to know about starting an architecture firm, finding clients, and getting the flexibility and freedom that you want to be able to pursue the designs that you would like to pursue. Today is our second half of our interview with Zeke Freeman. He's the principal and owner of Root Architecture and Development in Colorado, based out of Denver, Colorado. And last segment, we talked a little bit about how he's got to the point now where he's successfully developing and doing architect-led design build. So, Zeke, welcome back to the show. Good to be here, Enoch. Thank you. Now, I wanted just to rewind and go back in time a little bit and just ask you, what took you down this path of pursuing architect-led design build? So, I really grew up... Uh, in a kind of a self-reliant, uh, small town mentality out in East Texas. And my father was a builder. Um, pretty much everyone around me, you know, was in charge of making their own things. And so if you needed a, an addition done or you needed a barn put up, you know, you just went out and you kind of did it. Um, there was no architect or engineer or, you know, uh, building code and, and there's still a little bit of mockery to those, you know, pieces if you go back and, and you know, chat with the small towns. But the, the great thing about that was that, you know, you, you just did it. And so, the, you know, there's this kind of instilled a, uh, you know, mentality of that, you know, if you need something done, you, you know, you pull up your bootstraps and you, and you go get it done. And I never really, um, I kind of found architecture and the passion for design really later on in life. And that kind of, you know, was something that I've has become passionate about, but never really, I think, lost this, uh, you know, desire to have control of things all the way through. And so uh, there's many years of intention of trying to get to a point where uh, I would be able to you know, I think as an architect, you got to go through and pay your dues and, and you've got to work, you know, through IDP and through your firms and really learn, you know, how to put together buildings. But, um, you know, in game plan, you know, many years in the making was to come back around and be able to design and, and build projects and, and kind of, even if they're at a smaller scale, see the whole projects all the way through. And what would you say would be the keys to your success that you're having right now? I think the biggest thing in whatever business you're in is um, is having a good network of smarter people around you. And so I spent a lot of my time, uh, even while working for other firms, you know, just going out and and getting to know other and more successful people. Um, one of the things I kind of uh, volunteered for, say, at one of my last firm was to uh, take on the role of, of business developer. Not that any way uh, I had any, you know, skills or uh, business being in any sort of sales, but um, but had a but knew that, you know, one having time to build a network because it does take a lot of intentional effort, and and two the benefits of of building a good network. Uh, will pay off through your whole career. So, um, and I had tried to do that, you know, while I was in school, go go around and interview, you know, every developer and successful intern, you know, architect, because they'll they'll give you free advice at that time. It gets a little harder when you get into a professional career and you're competing against each other. And so, uh, if you by taking on kind of this business developer role, um, I got the free lunch card basically. You know, you get. To, uh, get the company credit card and, and take people out for lunch and 
you know, they're at least using it, willing to bend their ear for an hour. And if you can find something um, that you're offering up to help other people, um, then sales goes, goes away. And so that was probably key is learning that, you know, one, if you spend all your, as much time as you can trying to help other people, um, and then two, that instinctively builds its network will carry your career further. So, so for now, you know, the success that we're having isn't because, uh, I've gone out and marketed for any projects. Everything has been really built on several years of getting to know the community and getting to know, you know, investors, you know, making a lot of mistakes and, but then trying to do things right along that whole way. And people will, will refer to, you know, projects or, you know, um, properties, you know, whatever it may be on the road, if you've kind of clearly stated out your goals of what you're trying to do and you've done the same for them along the way, um, then you, you're more just helping each other reach your goals and those things come across the path. And, you, and if you know who's doing what, you can ship it that way. Um, and so you end up with a network of people that's win-win and you're helping each other out. So at the previous firm where you at, you had a principal who was understanding and trusting Great guy. to be able to give you that, that flexibility, you know? And so you have this free lunch card. What's your first, you know, What's your first move? Well, you know, as an architect, most most of the time your head is down in, in your projects. And so that's a great question uh, of what your first move is. So I, you know, started with the people, you know, that I knew, told them what we were doing, and, you know, again, kind of put out our goals. Um, what really uh, – I had a buddy that at the time was working for a, a, a geotech firm, and – you know, they do all the whole boring for soils tests, which is one of the early parts of, of development. And, uh, you know, we were talking about it at lunch one time, and he had his list of projects, and, and it was about 200 page long, big spreadsheet database. And, you know, I started asking, you know, where those things were going and, you know, what was happening on it. And started realizing it was a database full of, uh, you know, potential opportunities. And, you know, he passed that along to me. And, uh, you know, so my first move was to, go out and, and cold call 200 uh, soil reports. And, uh, you know, most of them were kind enough to take my call. Uh, but cold calling is, is never, uh, never a great long-term, you know, uh, lead. So most of those didn't turn into anything, but a lot of them turned into lunches. And, you know, and uh, as you started, uh, you know, finding out what other people were interested in. Um, you know, again, I was able to kind of refer things back over to them. And so, you know, as an architect, lots of times you've got, you know, you need your consultants, which end up being a great source of uh, leads as well. So if we had a project come through the office and I knew I had a consultant that specialized in, you know, hospitals, um, you know, I would pitch a project over to them and, and, and they knew that, you know, I was also trying to build projects. And so lots of times, you know, just by helping some of your consultants out, you know, they became a great source of sending other projects kind of back your way. Okay. You know, Do you remember uh, what those first cold calls were like? What, what you were, what you were saying, what, what was your pitch? I would, let's see. Uh, I, so the list had, um, you know, where the project was and, and the owner's name. Um, and so I, tr I did try to, to dig into those a little bit deeper rather than uh, just cold calling somebody. I would, you know, Google as much as I could, see what the project might be, have a little bit of understanding what, if, what it might, you know, entail, uh, call anyone that might have been associated with it before I actually called the, the, the owners. Um, and so let's see, I remember calling, uh, you know, on some apartment buildings. And we at our firm did not have much apartment experience, but I had quite a bit on my previous firm. Um, and so, you know, I call them up and, you know, you know, tell them who I was and, you know, ask them about their project. And, um, you know, lots of times those guys are always looking for preliminary layouts. It might be early. And so you know, if you can offer some free piece up, uh, you know, you know, can we help you do a, a, 
you know, a side analysis or a, or a schematic, you know, then you might get in the door or can we sit down and talk to you to see if there's, uh, you know, some area that we could, you know, give you a hand with. So um, those are probably some of the more successful ones is when there was some piece that you had at least some connection with, or if you knew, you know, Joe who might've been on involved in it, you could throw a name out that, you know, might've connected with that person that always, you know, instantly opens at least a connection with the person. Uh, if you have some other reference that, uh, you can point towards that might've asked, you might've, you know, recommended you to give them a call. So. So you went, so you're doing these business, these cold calls, and it sounds like you said that nothing, nothing turned out from that, that 200 long list of, of calls that you made. Um, so not a whole, you know, a lot of projects came out of that, Sure. you know, and, and again, it kind of comes back to the, you know, at the, t at the moment when you're looking in the tunnel, um, you know, of what what those things might might be at the moment can be frustrating and it's not till a few years down the road that you start to figure out okay that that's what you know all that was about in the big scheme of things um you know so you know making those calls um builds that skill set of you know of having some nerve to be able to you know then go to you know investors and then go to you know potential clients and so that skill set of learning how to you know, pitch yourself, not being afraid to do that. Um, and then what happens in those is, is over time you start to build that uh, network of people um, that slowly starts to know what you're looking for and refer things back to you. Um, and so a large part of, you know, the work that we have coming in now, um, you know, has come from, you know, real estate agents that, um, you know, I knew were looking for, you know, other clients, uh, you know, cause there's in a certain area. And so I'd referred, you know, friends that might've been looking to buy a house over to them. Um, or some of them I actually bought, you know, places with ourselves and, and they have an understanding of what you're looking for. And, and those have turned back into, you know, they have developers that are looking to do something similar. And so those, you know, come back around, you know, in a given time, but it's, there's never a, uh, there's never a one step or an overnight success to get there. I think it's, you know, you spend your career trying to help other people um, and figure out what it is that, you know, makes their business turn. Um, then they'll, then those things get reciprocated. Um, and it can be a solid basis for business, you know? Yeah. If you were going back and you could meet yourself two or three years ago when that originally happened, when you first got that free lunch card, so to speak, was, would there be anything that you would tell yourself about what to do differently? Mm -hmm. Well, no, I think the most important thing is to just get out there and do it because starting is always hard and you're always going to make mistakes in the beginning. Um, and you know, you're never gonna, um, you know, if you're, if you're learning something for the first time, you're going to be uncomfortable. And so I think it's important to just make a practice of, of finding whatever it is that makes you uncomfortable. Sales made me tremendously uncomfortable. Um, you know, and putting yourself into that, you know, construction this last year, um, you know, although I thought I kind of had a, you know, grew up and, 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 you know, had a good understanding of construction, you know, coming back around into it and really building that network of people, you know, uh, has been tremendously uncomfortable, but, um, you know, it's, it's a skill set that will continue to help you grow. There's no stretching, you know, unless you've stepped into those areas that, uh, you're just not a hundred percent, you know, used to. So as much as you can, if you can, you know, get out of doing CAD and Revit and, you know, find the uh, pieces of business that are on the periphery, you need all of those in your bag of tools. Um, so I think that was a real important uh, time in my career. You know, I'm a great SketchUp and Revit guy. I spent, you know, years my, with my head down. And I think those are the things that you naturally pick up as an intern, but, you know, what you have to push yourself to, to learn are those periphery things, CA and, uh, you know, business development, accounting. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I just push, keep pushing those peripheries, you know, that aren't, aren't natural. 
Zeke, you built your own house, and I'd like to take our audience through the process of what it took to build your own house, and maybe we can learn something from you about that. So, uh, after so, kind of in between, uh, you know, starting my own business and having pitched that uh, that duplex that we looked at, you know, and hadn't had any success on that, um, you know, and this again, kind of coming back to this feeling of, you know, I just I'm tired of trying to get people to say it's okay for me to, to do something. I just want to go and just do it um, and do it anyways. You know, building your own home is one of the um, really easier things uh, to get into. It's very difficult to do and get done and fit into, you know, a full life, you know, of job and, and uh, you know, kids and career and all those things. But uh, it is one of those things that's financially accessible. So there's a... Uh, an FHA loan, it's a 203K, um, and, you know, the great thing about that is they'll let you borrow as much construction cost as you want um, as long as your income can support it. And so, you know, there's no, you know, after repair value ratio or anything that they, they look at. Um, so, you know, I wanted to build new homes, and so I went, you know, and looked for the crappiest house that we could possibly find in the best location and you know we spent a year doing that and uh, found a great little cabin uh, just outside of town this community called Indian Hills it's up on a hill and has a great view and it's the you know it was the doggiest ugliest little cabin but I knew it was enough that I could like I've got two boys and a, and, a, and a wife and they're you know they're up for camping and so it was basically camping for a year so we moved into the cabin um Bought the cabin for one hundred thirty thousand. Um, borrowed one hundred thousand. Uh, the two hundred three k is a three percent down loan, and so you know six thousand dollars into it. You can get owner concessions um, that can go towards that amount down uh, up to. Um, I can't remember what the percentage is, but you can get owner concession. So it can reduce that number down even a little bit less. And so I think we were into the house and into the construction for, you know, it ended up being maybe three grand or something by the time we were done. Um, and we had a full construction budget to, you know, go play with basically as an architect that so you get excited about that. And I did want to build most of the house. I did, I was working, you know, full-time job, um, and so what I tra- did is uh, we, we did a large addition, and we did that addition out of basically a timber frame and uh, zip panels that kind of sit in between the timber frame. Um, and then the house kind of sits up on stilts on these uh, called Bigfoot platforms. And I tried to pick everything I could that could be done you know, quickly because I had to either get this done on my vacation time or, or weekends. Um, and I took two weeks off, uh, did the foundations, you know, pretty much did everything ourselves. We, you know, excavated, you know, rented a tractor, put in these foundations, uh, and then built the platform. We had a, a big boom crane out, and in about two days, you know, had a full building up with those sit panels. They, they're fantastic. They go really fast. Um, you know, the tricky part is the you know, we're on this hill, so we have a, a timber frame that was, you know, up 30 foot in the air. Um, my father came up for a week, and, you know, we, we got out our old climbing gear and stretched it across and, you know, put put the timber in the air. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but what it kind of did is it substantiated, you know, we, we kept a little blog going at the time, and it was one way to kind of communicate uh, back to uh friends and uh and other uh colleagues what we were doing um and i put you know put that in my wife territory to do and she kind of kept it up and you know it just generated a lot of interest uh and it substantiated a little bit that you know you know that kind of seeks a a bootstrap kind of guy and we'll go out and get it done if it needs to get done um and you know this pieces that we've been talking about uh trying to do can uh you know, he's a guy that can get it done. And so just by having something, you know, whatever scale it might be, you know, that, that someone can feel in touch and come and walk through and have a beer with you uh, is a great platform to, you know, go to the next level that you want. So, Zeke, I will put that uh, 
the the URL to the blog that your wife did okay. documenting that process in the show notes for those listening so they can go back and look at that process. How, how important would you say this process was of building your own house to being able to break into the field of developing and building projects? Well, you know, it wasn't so much about learning to, to build for me. I mean, honestly, you know, that's kind of what we grew, I grew up doing. Um, but it was, you know, that was back in Texas and, and in, a, in a new area you know, and in construction, one of the hardest things is, is getting that, that network of, you know, what becomes a subconsultant that you have a, a trust with. And so, um, you know, one, it started to build the network of subconsultants, uh, you know, two, it substantiated to some of the investors and colleagues of, you know, what we're trying to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, and, and then three, it does, you know, anything that kind of gets you out of the office for a little bit and gets you fresh air and generates new ideas. Um, so yeah, it was, it was significant at the time. Okay. And Jonathan Siegel always says that that's his number one recommended course for architects who want to start developing their own projects. Would you agree with it's that? A gr- yeah, it's, it's a great way to start. Um, you know, we, you, you need, when you're developing your own projects, you know, it, it takes, it takes cash experience, uh, you know, and then trust with, with your network of people that you, that you can get it done. Um, and so by developing your own house, you can actually get a little bit of cash, which is, you know, one of the key things to do. We, and we haven't sold this house that we're in yet. Um, we had uh, fixed and flipped some other houses up to this point. Um, and, but when we do, you know, but we have a little equity, and so that that helps now uh, to take out other loans, um, and so it, it it is key and it is helpful, I think, both in ex, you know in cash and in experience, and then also building that network. Now, you've done, you've just spoken a lot about your network, Zeke. What's your top strategy for for developing that network? What do you do to cultivate your network? You know, I, I think it's pretty simple. Uh, it's, I talked a little bit about, you know, just uh, trying to help other people. Um, I think that's, you know, probably key number one is whatever you can do to find uh, that you can help someone else out. Um, you know, well, it's, people naturally want to reciprocate that. Um, and, and do it genuinely. You know, I mean, if you're doing if – you, if you're an unintentional per, per person, people read that, you know, like a book. Uh, so be genuine and and really try to help people. And then, you know, as an architect, you know, you're busy as heck uh, and it's hard to find time. You know, everybody has to eat, though. And, you know, the simplest thing that you can do as an architect is, you know, g- get away from your cubicle and go out to lunch and call any of your colleagues that you know, you know, whether it's a you know, another subconsultant or a potential client and, you know, go to lunch, find out what they're doing. And then start the process of trying to help them. Um, and that's it. You know, I, I think those two things, you know, don't eat lunch alone and don't, uh, you know, be an asshole. Uh, you know, be nice and try to help people out. You know, we'll, we'll build your network. Awesome. Well, Zeke, do you have anything else when we, uh, before we close up the, the interview today? Anything else that you, you think we should touch on or go over that you'd like to talk to our audience about? Um, let's see. So we talked a little bit about um, starting your house uh, as a great form. We talked a little bit about um, you know putting together at, at least a pitch, um, which is what we did with the the Pearl Street house, and becoming you know an expert in some area. Um, I think that was maybe something worth touching on a little bit. Is you know you can't do everything, and so you you should pick something you know I picked a particular you know project type model and on a particular land size of 50 by 125 um, and become good at doing that one thing and find the people who are interested in that um, is, is really you know important and then you know and then you don't have to be a you know don't be so much of a you got to be a generalist in the sense that you can you know, as an architect, you got to get a lot of things done, but be specific enough 
that you can be an expert in some area. What else would be good to talk about? <laughs> uh, well, here's here's a question that I think would probably be good to end with is, how has this process of being involved in the development of projects changed your view of what goes into design and your view as an architect? I, so developing your own projects um, opens up a lot of doors. Um, you know, when you're looking at a, a project from a from an architecture stance, you know, we all love beautiful buildings, and it's a great thing to you know offer up to the community. Um, but if unless you, but my understanding of a few of the other pieces that go into it, you know, the financing aspects of how these things get done, uh, the construction aspect of how these things get built, um, you can really enhance you know, that architectural quality because you create a, a greater project of value. Um, what happens so much in, uh, and it's so frustrating as, as just the architect and just looking at that one piece is you, you probably create the most beautiful, you know, a more beautiful building um, than without those pieces, but it gets V'd out and those subtraction process, you inevitably end up with less of a project, frustrated clients, uh, you know, potential lawsuits. And so, you know, I think everyone should at least, you know, try to dive into knowing those, those key pieces. Um, and it can help you actually get, make these things become feasible. Um, you know, if you know what a client needs and what their, uh, you know, agenda is to get it, you know, financed, um, you know, it might be like with a 203K, it's about, you know, it's about speed. You know, can you get all those pieces together early so they know how much to borrow? You know, it might be more important uh, than, you know, having a great looking building. It might be scope of work early on. Something different for everybody else. You know, on the on the duplex projects, you know, figuring out how to get, you know, an extra 100 square feet at 300 bucks a square foot, uh, you know, makes a project go from, feasible to not feasible, you know, from a $50,000 to, you know, uh, maybe $100,000 of profit. And if you can, you know, find what it is that, you know, that client really needs to make it feasible, then, you know, they, they're they going to be happier at the end of the day. You're going to get more projects done. Um, I think we get to be a little bit easier. <laughs> All right. Well, any, any parting words for us, Zeke? Um, you know, just be bold. I think uh, I love Sam Adams. Uh, um, Who's the guy? Uh, Come me out here. Sam Motby area that uh, says proceed and be bold. You know, I mean, I think everyone just needs to uh, be willing to step out on those limbs, stretch yourself a little further, um, get out of your cube, and go do it, man. I love it. I love it. All right, Zeke, well, it's been great having you on the show. We look forward to touching bases with you in the future as, as Root Architecture and Development continues to grow. Thank you so much, Enoch. You've All been right. a great okay. inspiration. Keep doing it, buddy. Thanks. I appreciate it. And that's a wrap. Thanks for riding along on another show about the business of architecture. I want to know your opinion about today's episode. Visit businessofarchitecture.com forward slash podcast or send me an email at show at businessofarchitecture.com with your feedback about today's show. And remember, visit businessofarchitecture.com forward slash free to grab your free membership pass to Business of Architecture Insider, where you'll have first access to free resources to help you run a great business. See you next week. views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and i make no representation promise guarantee pledge warranty contract bond or commitment except to help you run a great business but music credit to ben folds five do it anyway